Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be sharing several different recipes that will be perfect for your holiday meal or your Thanksgiving meal this year. And I'm so excited to be sharing these because they are not only very, very easy dishes, but all of them are gluten-free, dairy-free, and refined sugar-free. And even a lot of them are paleo. So if you are looking to create a more healthy menu, a more guilt-free menu for your family and friends, then this is the video that you need to watch. As I share each recipe, I will have a recipe card pop up before that, so you can go ahead and just screenshot that. And then I will also have all of the recipe cards linked down below on my blog so that you can refer back to them very easily. And without further ado, let's get into it. first recipe that I'm going to be sharing is just how I make my roasted turkey. This is super, super easy. I don't do anything super fancy with it, but it always comes out super moist and flavorful. So the first thing that you're going to do is set your oven to 325 degrees, and then you will just want to prep your turkey. What I usually do is just remove the giblets and empty it out completely, and then I give my turkey a nice little rinse, and then I use these Reynolds oven bags, and this is one of the tips that I have to get a really, really juicy turkey. So you're going to grab your roasting dish and then open up the bag inside of it and put your turkey in there and then the next thing I do is I will cover this with butter now if you want to be completely dairy free you can of course use a vegan butter or even use a coconut oil but I am personally okay to just use a grass-fed butter so this is just Kerrygold and you want to cut the room temperature butter into small little bits and then just kind of lay it all throughout the turkey a little bit on top and then a little bit inside even and then the next thing you're going to do is add some rosemary and one tip for this is you want to crush up the rosemary in your hand and it just really releases all all those flavors and then you will salt and pepper your turkey and that is all the seasonings that we are going to be doing and the last thing you want to do before you put your turkey in the oven is to add a half a cup of white wine now this is just cooking wine and this is totally optional you don't have to do this it just helps your turkey stay really really juicy once you have all that done you will close the oven bag and secure it with a little tie they provide for you and you will bake your turkey for 13 minutes for every pound or if you have decided to stuff your turkey, then you bake it for 15 minutes for each pound. And I just like to check on the turkey periodically, maybe two or three times during the baking process. And I will also baste it and bring some of the juices to the top as I take it out and check on it. Like I said, this turkey is so incredibly juicy and so delicious. Now you can just let it rest for a few minutes before you carve into it. And then of course, save the pan drippings because we will be using that later for some delicious homemade turkey gravy. Okay, my next recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you guys could not be easier. I'm going to show you guys how to make baked sweet potatoes. Now, there is a way that you can make these in your oven, and I will have the information on how to do that on the bottom of the recipe card, but today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to make them in your slow cooker so that one, it is not taking up time and room in your oven, and second, it is literally a set it and forget it kind of thing, which is perfect for the busy holiday season. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to wash your sweet potatoes, and then you're going to set them in your slow cooker and that's it. You do not even have to poke these or anything. Just put the slow cooker lid on and then cook it on high for three to four hours or on low for eight hours. And all you have to do once your sweet potatoes are all cooked is just add whatever kind of toppings you want. This is totally optional and customizable. My favorite way is to put butter. Again, you can use coconut oil, vegan butter, whatever kind. This is just grass-fed butter. And then I love topping it with cinnamon. It is just so good and mildly sweet this way. You can of course do salt and pepper. And another really fun one is to do yogurt. You can of course use a dairy-free yogurt and it's just kind of like a little bit of a sour cream effect. You can also add bacon to this. Really the toppings are endless for this one. The next recipe I'm going to be sharing with you guys is how to make deviled eggs. So the first thing you're going to do is hard boil your eggs. You can do this over the stove top the traditional way or the way that I love to do it is actually in my instant pot. So all you have to do is just put your little trivet at the bottom of your instant pot that it comes with and then you will cook your eggs on manual for five minutes. And then once the timer goes off, just let them sit in there for just a few more minutes. And then once they are all done, you will release the steam from the instant pot and take your eggs out and put them directly into an ice bath. And this will just help stop the cooking process. So once you have your eggs cooked, you will go through and peel all of them. My favorite way to do this is just crack them and then just peel them directly into the bowl that you had the ice bath in. I have found this works really, really well and it helps kind of rinse them off as well. Once you have all of your eggs peeled, you're going to take them and cut them lengthwise down the middle of every single egg so that you have them all cut into two. And then you're going to remove the yolk from all of the eggs as well, put all of the yolks into a small bowl. 
So depending on how many eggs you make, you can kind of adjust this recipe to fit that. But for about 12 eggs, you are going to add in some mayonnaise. If you are eating dairy-free, just make sure that it is a dairy-free mayonnaise, but most of them actually are. And you are going to add in between a third to a half cup of mayonnaise, just depending on how creamy you want this. And then you will add in one tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And then you're also going to add in half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, followed by some salt and pepper to taste. Once you have all the ingredients added into your yolks, you're just going to kind of mash everything up. You can do this with a fork if you would like. However, I have found that using a hand mixer is just a little bit easier and it does make it really, really creamy and smooth. So that is my favorite way to do it. But like I said, you can do it however you want to do it. Next, you're just going to fill up all your eggs with your yolk mixture. And my favorite way to do this is to add all the yolk mixture right into a little Ziploc bag, squeeze all the air out, and then just cut a little hole in one of the corners. And that will create a perfect makeshift piping bag. Once you have the filling piped into your eggs, you can just sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper to taste if you would like. And then another optional topping is paprika. Now you don't wanna overdo this, but this does really create a really, really pretty color on the table. And it also adds a little bit of a smoky flavor. So it's just really, really good. And I would definitely recommend trying that out. The next recipe that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is a delicious and super simple homemade cranberry sauce. So to start out, you will just grab your saucepan and turn the heat to medium high. Then you will add in your bag of cranberries, pour in one cup of juice. This can be apple juice, orange juice, or cranberry juice. Then you will add in your half cup of maple syrup. And this next part is totally optional, but you can add in some orange zest if you would like, or you can leave it out depending on if you like that flavor. Next, you will just stir everything together and cook it on medium high heat until it reaches a boil. And once it's reached that boil, you will turn the heat to medium low for about 10 minutes or until you start to see it thicken. This is one of my favorite things to cook just because you see all the cranberries burst and that bright red color it is so pretty and it smells so so good I feel like it just smells like the holidays so if you have not ever tried making homemade cranberry sauce definitely give it a shot it is so much better than the canned stuff and like you can see it is so incredibly easy to make so once your cranberry sauce has thickened you will just remove that from the heat and you can store it in an airtight container this is something that is totally a preference, but you can either serve it warm or cold. I've seen it done both ways and I even do it both ways depending on what our mood is, but this is just such a delicious and easy recipe. All right, the next recipe I'm going to be sharing with you guys is one of my favorites. This is a homemade gluten-free and dairy-free green bean casserole. So the first thing you're going to do is to preheat your oven to 400 degrees, and then you're going to take your green beans. I just am using frozen, but you can definitely use fresh if you would like. And you're going to put a little bit of oil in your pan and then saute your green beans just until they are warmed through. And then while your green beans are sauteing, grab another large pot. You will add your oil, chopped onion, minced garlic, and saute that for two to three minutes. And then next you will add your chopped mushrooms and saute for two to three more minutes. Next you are going to sprinkle in some gluten-free flour over your vegetable mixture. This is just the brand that I really love, but you can use whatever one you like. And if you are not doing gluten-free, you can definitely just use traditional flour in this case. And you will just kind of stir to coat that on your veggies. And then you are going to very slowly add in your broth and whisk that while you are adding that in. And then once that is all combined, you are going to very slowly again add in your almond milk whisking as it's added in as well and then you will cook that for five to seven minutes while it thickens up stirring occasionally so now that you have all those components to the green bean casserole dish made you are just going to make the fried onions these are so good you can definitely just eat them as they are so all you're going to do is take one large onion cut it in half and then very very thinly slice it then you will get two small dishes one you can pour almond milk in and the other one you will just pour some regular gluten-free flour in I would actually recommend seeing seasoning this just a little bit with either some salt and pepper or you can do like some garlic or onion seasoning just to kind of flavor it up a little bit. And then once that is all incorporated, you will just pour your onions into the dish with the milk and make sure that you coat those pretty well. And then just slowly grab some small batches of onions from the milk and then put it into your flour mixture. Again, this is just my same gluten-free flour that I shared earlier. And you will just toss those about until they are coated in the flour mixture. Next, you just wanna grab a large skillet with some high sides and you will pour in some oil. I am just using avocado oil but you can use whatever kind of oil you have on hand once the oil is hot you're just going to start frying your onions and you'll just want to do this in smaller batches and it only takes about 45 seconds to a minute in order for these to be done but just wait until they are about golden brown and then you can take them out and put them onto a paper towel to dry 
And that is how you can make some homemade onion straws. Like I said, these are so delicious and so good to just snack on by themselves. But once everything is done, then you will start combining your green bean casserole into your dish. And then you can pour in all of your warmed green beans. On top of that, you are going to grab your mushroom mixture and just kind of mix that in well with the green beans. And then you just top it all off with your homemade fried onions. Then season with salt and pepper to taste and add it into your 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes or so. And just keep an eye on this to see if you need to add a cover or take it off to make sure that it looks golden brown if it does not burn. All right, the next dish that we are going to be making is bacon Brussels sprouts. If you are not a fan of Brussels sprouts, I bet that if you try this, you will end up loving them. They are so easy to make, super quick, and they are so incredibly flavorful. So the first thing you're going to do is cook some bacon. I am just cooking this in my cast iron skillet, but you can definitely cook this however you prefer. Just make sure that you keep the bacon drippings because that is going to be what you are going to flavor your Brussels sprouts with later. So while the bacon is cooking, you're just going to take the tip off of your Brussels sprouts and then chop the Brussels sprouts in half, or if they are very large, then you can quarter them, but just kind of make them into bite-sized pieces. So once your bacon is nice and crispy, you can just transfer that to a paper towel to drain, and you're going to add the Brussels sprouts into the bacon drippings and cook until golden brown and crispy. This will take about 12 to 15 minutes or so. Just make sure that you are stirring occasionally to prevent burning and lower the heat if needed. Now, while the Brussels sprouts are cooking, you're going to cut your bacon into two little bite-sized pieces and crumbles. And then once the Brussels sprouts are all done, you can season with salt and pepper and top it with bacon and you are finished. And now you can enjoy this delicious side dish. This next dish is garlic mashed cauliflower. This is another one that really is so, so simple. All you are going to do is chop your cauliflower into small little florets, and then you are going to steam your cauliflower. You can do this on the stove top the traditional way, or you can use an electric steamer or your instant pot like I'm using here. But all you have to do is steam your cauliflower for just 10 minutes or until they are tender with a fork. And then next you're going to heat some olive oil in a skillet over medium heat, and then add in one clove of minced garlic, and then just cook and stir that for about one to two minutes. And try not to burn it like I did here. I was definitely multitasking and burn this a little bit, but try your hardest not to burn it and it will come out a little bit better. Once your garlic is all cooked, you will just transfer half of your cauliflower to a food processor, blend that on high, and then you can add the rest of your steamed cauliflower into the food processor and then blend it until creamy. And then you can add in your cooked garlic and salt and pepper to taste. This is such a great low carb alternative to mashed potatoes. So if you're wanting to have kind of like a little bit lighter of a meal, this is definitely a good option. So the next recipe that I wanted to share with you guys is how to make homemade gravy with your pan drippings from your turkey. So to start out, you are going to heat a pan on medium heat and then you will add to that pan about two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour. And again, you can use grass-fed butter, dairy-free butter, or oil, depending on whatever your diet is. And then once that melts in the pan, you will sprinkle in two tablespoons of your flour and I am using gluten-free flour for this. And this measurement will be perfect if you are adding in one cup of pan drippings. So if you have more than that, then you'll just have to kind of change up the recipe to match. And then you will just start whisking that together and this will create a roux. Once you have your roux created, you are going to grab the pan drippings from your turkey. The easiest way I've found is just to use a baster and suck up the pan drippings directly from the turkey and put it directly into your pot. You'll want to add the pan drippings in kind of slowly and continue to whisk the gravy. And this will just help the gravy thicken up really nice and not get clumpy and the gravy will thicken slightly as it cooks and as it cools. Now you can also season the gravy but I have found that I usually don't have to because I have seasoned the turkey so well with the salt and pepper and the rosemary but you can just taste it and see if you need to add anything to it. But homemade gravy is so incredibly tasty. If you have not ever tried making it before make sure that you save those pan drippings and make it this year. You will not regret it. You can never go back once you've had homemade gravy. So this last recipe I actually filmed, but I was having some camera issues and the footage didn't end up turning out. But I did wanna share this blueberry grunt recipe with you guys. So I'm just going to leave the recipe card up here for you to screenshot if you would like. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that this gave you a ton of new ideas and new recipes to try out this holiday season. If you guys have any really good recipes, especially if they are gluten and dairy free, I would love if you guys would share them in the comments below and that way we can just kind of get more ideas from each other. I hope you guys have an amazing Thanksgiving, an amazing holiday season. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, it would mean so much if you would go ahead and share this on your social media accounts or with a family member or friend. That always means so much when you guys share my videos. 
Do not forget to subscribe down below if you are not already and also head over to Instagram and follow me over there and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.